I'm Peter Boyer. I'm a composer and orchestrator and conductor. I heard the Mozart Requiem for the first time as a, as a high school sophomore, and I got the crazy idea that I would compose a Requiem Mass uh, to celebrate my, my grandmother who had died. Uh, it took me two years to write the piece, from 15 to 17, and finished the piece when I was about 17, turning 18. And when I had just turned 20, I had the opportunity to conduct 300 performers uh, as an undergraduate, as a junior at Rhode Island College, conduct 300 performers in this premiere of a 40-minute Requiem that I had written for my grandmother. And so, needless to say, this was an unusual way to start uh, a life in classical music. But the reaction of the audience to this uh, event and this thing that had been so long in the making was profoundly impactful on me. And from then, I, I kind of have become hooked uh, on the orchestra and on classical music and have never really looked back. Now, looking back, you know, from the vantage point of having been writing music for a long time, musically, I would not necessarily want to share that piece uh, with folks these days. But for a teenager, essentially, I think it, it turned out reasonably well. I was into music, but it, but it was basically pop music. So I was, like many people, um, I grew up as a Billy Joel wannabe, so I started playing and singing pop songs when I was 15. And, uh, and so basically was, you know, was pursuing pop music and starting to write songs just about the same time I was starting to encounter this early classical repertoire. So um, I've never lost my love for pop music, but didn't pursue that as my avenue. And I did uh, multiple years of, of higher education, working in composition, conducting, um, and also then studied privately with a composer, John Corleano, and moved out to uh, Los Angeles to study film and TV scoring at USC. And so interests in classical music and in film TV music um, were honed through uh, lots, lots of uh, work in both you know, an academic setting and also a professional setting. I mean, if one wants to write music for orchestras, the only way to really get a chance to do that is to get an opportunity to have an orchestra perform one's work. Um, and those things can be hard to come by when one is young. So it's a slow, gradual process. Uh, and I have to say that uh, having won two BMI Student Composer Awards when I was just a lad, that was extremely helpful because that was a kind of validation that uh, I was on the right path to actually learning how to become an orchestral composer, very important. BMI is, is a very important part of uh, my life. First of all, you know, to be able to make a living as a composer, and particularly as a classical composer, is an inherently difficult thing. Um, and certainly, the financial support that BMI makes possible through one's performance royalties, I mean, to be very straightforward about it, that's a very important part of my income. That's a very important part of my living. And so I'm obviously very grateful for that. But of course, BMI is, by its very nature, uh, it's an organization that's inherently supportive of composers of all genres, of all stripes. And that kind of nurturing and professional uh, mentoring and creative support is extremely important. My uh, instrumental training is only as a pianist. So I'm often asked, well, in order to be able to compose for the orchestra, do you have to be able to play all those instruments? Uh, and the answer is no. So if you were to put a flute in my hands or put a tuba in my hands, the result would be very unpleasant. But um, I have spent a great deal of time simply studying how these things work and uh, one eventually develops a facility to understand combinations of orchestral instruments, of color, etc. But when I compose, I essentially start at the piano. And the piano has always been a creative outlet for me. Often the kernel of a piece, an idea, will be born out of an improvisation. So simply sitting at the piano and trying to clear one's mind and have notes come forth this is often the way that the, the initial idea is developed. It's actually my most performed piece, I'm happy to say. And it's a big piece. It's a 45-minute piece for actors and orchestra with projected images. And uh, this piece was born out of, out of an idea somewhere around 1999 or 2000. Uh, the idea struck me that Ellis Island and early 20th century American immigration was such a rich topic. I made several trips to Ellis Island to study these oral histories, which are interviews that were done with, uh, in total, nearly 2,000 people who are actual Ellis Island immigrants. One of the hardest tasks with this piece was deciding how do I just choose a handful, or in this case, seven stories out of these couple of thousand stories. It's, it's a really daunting task. And so as I spent weeks researching these stories, hearing first-person accounts, hearing people who were 
old people who were recounting experiences that were decades before, I was, of course, extremely moved and inspired and emotionally touched by these stories. And that became the focus point for the music. Classical composers, you know, were often rather isolated folks. Uh, we tend to spend tons of time in our studio alone, uh, especially if you're crafting an orchestral piece on your own. So, you know, collaboration, of course, can take many forms. And I have to say, in, in my case, uh, one of the most rewarding collaborations recently was the PBS Great Performances special of Ellis Island, The Dream of America, because it involved multiple types of collaborations. Collaboration with an orchestra, in this case Pacific Symphony, very close collaboration with a conductor, in this case Carl St. Clair, collaboration with actors who read the stories of those immigrants, and collaboration with video designers who uh, took their talents in adapting these great historical photos to my piece, and collaboration with the production team from WNET Great Performances who had to actually conceive of a vision to film and edit this production. So, uh, for my case, uh, in my case as a classical composer, that project had types of collaboration that I haven't had the opportunity to do before. In the world of classical music, commissioning is a just a sort of uh, more elaborate word to say one is hired. There is a certain um, prestige and value in being commissioned by various orchestras, and particularly with um, bigger and more established ones, a commission is something that really uh, can have a great deal of both um, you know, financial value and also personal value that if uh, a major orchestra actually reaches out and says we would like for you to create a piece for you know, a year from now, or a year and a half from now, and these are the particular parameters, that's a very special sort of situation for a composer and, and I've been fortunate to have had uh, about 20 or so orchestral commissions.